this is Sam Kaufman with the Human Path again. I uh, made a video uh, with some new tools the other day and I didn't really like it. I'm leaving it up here but I wanted to make a better longer version of the same thing. This is all about survival bows and I started off by um, uh, kind of going through the Ash Juniper as a good survival bow would and so before I got to that I wanted to review and if you went if you check out my blog you'll see that the um, the last wood that I kind of was looking at was actually American Sycamore so American Sycamore I made a really quick survival bow with that and a little bit more about what a survival bow is to me uh, but I made that American Sycamore bow and it just didn't really have very much snap to it it was just kind of dead you know and here's a, there's a short uh, video excerpt of me shooting a few arrows through it and it just I don't know if you can see from looking at this but it didn't have the snap that I wanted and so I let it dry a little bit to see if that would help, and it really didn't. Uh, in fact, I ended up with a cracked bow, and I, and I just didn't think that American Sycamore was such a great wood um, in, in retrospect. So um, before I go on to the Juniper, I just wanted to mention, I, I said in there that to me a survival bow is something you can cut down in about 30 minutes. And I stand by that. I think that if you can make a survival bow in about 30 minutes to maybe an hour, and then take about the same amount of time for a couple of arrows, you're doing pretty good. And that's what I define as a survival bow. And there's a lot of different types of survival bows, but the time involved and the, and the labor involved, again, ration sweat, not water, as the saying goes, that's what we're after. So onto Ash Juniper. It's just a great, great wood, and it's just a great tree. And it's not the greatest bow wood necessarily but I've been experimenting with it. it's kind of cool so it grows here's a picture of the tree it grows all around here um, I went ahead and cut off about a six foot piece that needed to be trimmed anyway um, and I made a cut that into two smaller pieces along you know the, the mother piece and then sort of the, the child piece that goes on the inside on the belly it could go on the inside or the outside but I taped those together with duct tape um, you can of course bind them with cloth as well but the point is that uh, duct tape is a really fast way to kind of tell how things are going to tiller and how they work out. So I use that for, for more of the experimentation phase. So I just wanted to talk through kind of how I went about doing this. For those that don't really know how to make a survival bow, what you have to do uh, for this type of survival bow is you need to uh, taper the ends and give it what's called a rat tail on either end. So in other words, you need to make it so it tillers or that has a, an even bend from the center all the way through the end. Now here you see I'm just basically kind of tillering portions of it right there on that bench and getting an idea as to how those portions are and what, I, what I'm looking for is just a nice smooth even bend from the center all the way to the tip and then I tiller the whole bow together and I get an even bend all the way from the center through both tips and so what you end up with then is a bow that isn't gonna it's gonna have a less uh, possibility of, of breaking of course and it's gonna have a nice even pole it's not gonna stack and so here's what I'm doing is that was my my long piece now I'm doing the short piece for this and this is a short piece that in, in my case is going to go on the belly of the bow I kind of prefer to do it that way but you can do it other ways too and what I'm going to do is attach the, this bow basically I'm going to tape them together and I can later on I'll just uh, I'll do these where I'm tying them together but for right now just to show this very quickly I'm using duct tape because it's very easy to do that so I'm going to tape them together so what is important is that there's a relationship between the short piece and the long piece and that relationship is very important because if the short piece is too stiff, the long piece is going to crack. And if the short piece is too, uh, too uh, soft in comparison to the long piece, then the same thing will happen. It'll just crack at a different port part of the bow. So it's very important that you figure out kind of what your poundage is going to be from the bow. And then you, and then you tiller each piece separately as much as you can. And then you put them together, and then you kind of tiller the whole thing together. And if you need to, you pull it back apart. If you if you realize once you put it together, the most common uh, kind of mistake that you'll make is that you'll end up with a bowl that's way too way too firm. All right, so I finished this up now. Now I'm just kind of warming the wood up a little bit. I didn't want to shoot right away. You know, you want to you always want to warm that wood up. Now the problem with ash juniper really its biggest problem is that it twists, and and then secondly that it cracks very easily if you don't. Um, Dry, um, dry it correctly if you don't uh, season it correctly. So, um, what I uh, usually you know what what I'm talking about here is a green survival bow. We're making it with green wood. I don't expect it to last more than a couple weeks, maybe a couple months. Um, I'm getting about a 40 to a 50 pound pull off of this, and it's a great bow. I'm shooting at 30 feet, and after about uh, 10 shots or so, I was definitely able to get a pretty good, a pretty tight group on these. Um, I'll I'll show some more uh, shots that are uh, um, trying to figure out a good way to be able to shoot and really show the group on these arrows uh, when I'm shooting these these survival bows. But um, uh, I will, and I'll, I'll get back to you on that. But it's uh, this one I was, I'm really impressed with. So I would say, in general, um, Ash Juniper is a very good survival bow wood. Um, but uh, again, you know, bear in mind the fact that it's going to crack fairly easily and that it's not... Um, 
it's not necessarily the best long-term bow wood unless you season it correctly and otherwise has a great snap to it all right thanks a lot and uh, hope you enjoyed this and i'll be getting back to you with more woods and more different types of of uh, survival bows to include bundle bows and some other things uh, here in the very near future as well